Coogan Cassius IFL TV MTK Global in Newcastle here um, Lewis Ritson returns for a European title clash on October 13th Joshua Buatzi fighting for the first time in Newcastle first time I've actually been here oh really yeah yeah, yeah. so I'm a bit I'm in unknown territory so I'm just looking around eyes are peeled but um, first time up here so far so good talk to me about your Geordie accent what you got all I know is they're saying like after everything. Yeah. It's cold today, like, that's all they say. But I'm looking forward to it. I've got a few mates up here. I've never been to their houses to see them, but I know this is where they're from. Um, the McCormack twins, this is where they're from. So um, I feel a bit welcomed, a little bit. Yeah, but listen, look, my main focus now is October the 13th. I've heard the atmosphere is going to be insane. So that's what I'm looking forward to experiencing. Okay. Um, yeah, so opponent-wise, what's been discussed with you and Eddie Hearn? regarding this show? You know, as I was coming, I spoke to him and um, he says, again, it's a difficult job, but we're looking. So, as of now, I personally don't know who I'm boxing. Um, but I've started my camp and October 13th, I'll be in shape, I'll be ready. So, whoever it is, I'm sure they'll find out as well and they can start preparing. But as of now, as we speak, I don't know who I'm fighting yet. Is it a case of just stepping it up each time? Because you've not had that many fights as a pro, so yeah. is it a case of just sort of bettering the last opponent and yeah. at this exactly stage? Yeah, exactly what I asked Eddie as well. I said, you know, we need to kind of keep the train going. We need to keep progressing on and keep moving. But he was saying at the elite level in your division, there's some real killers, which is true. All the world champions are real killers. But again, it's not about going back or stepping down in the opponent we want to level up but gradually do it so um, that experience he's got and my team have got so me as the fighter my job only is to prepare and to deal with who's in front of me so um, yeah I want to keep progressing on and moving up but like you said I've only had seven fights so it's that balance I think people sometimes obviously get carried away because obviously you know you've got people like Eddie Hearn kind of talking you up um, and rightly so, from you know, from what we've seen so far. Yeah. So they want to kind of say, it's like, we'll put him in with so and so. But that, yeah. you've had seven fights, so yeah, yeah. you have to put a bit of uh, yeah, reality nah, into th it. There's a reality to everything, because um, I always say this, Coop. When it's all said and done, you step in the ring. The referee says seconds out. Everyone steps out of the ring. My best friends, they step out of the ring. Yeah. People sit down, cross their legs, and they watch. And if you're not ready, if you're not ready, and you've been thrown in the deep end all eyes are on you you have to sink or swim mm. there's no one that can help you in that ring so yeah there's the reality check of that and but there's also the excitement that people want to see me step up and to be rushed and to box people that are potentially ahead of me right now but you know it's all with timing is a goal for you or kind of your first major goal to kind of possibly capture the British title is that on the plan yeah for I, you? Think, I think just from the mentality of the amateurs you kind of conquer the national level yeah. and then you get to the international scene. And you so you're, yeah, because some people obviously don't do that, but that's sometimes down to opportunities they're given before they yeah. kind of reach a certain stage. If they get an opportunity yeah. at a higher stage, they sometimes take it. It sometimes works no. out, sometimes it doesn't. Yeah. But for you, for a plan me, is yeah, to kind of move up the move, ranks. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to move up that way. Um, like Lewis Ritson's doing here. Brit yeah, this, this is what I'm British saying. British title, now he's fighting for the European yeah. title. I'm, I'm about to ask him what does the Sandman mean because I know that's his nickname. Yeah. It's a cool nickname, by the way, but I need to. What, what is the Sandman? What does it mean? So hopefully, if I see him somewhere, I'm going to ask him what does the Sandman mean? What Do are your what? thoughts? <laughs> ask him in the press conference. Oh, so you don't know what it means either? Yeah. Do you know what? I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I'm a big Lewis Ritson fan, but I'm embarrassed to know. I'm a big fan of his as well, so I'm going to ask him today what the Sandman means. But um, yeah, he's doing it the right way. He's gone to the British. He's going to go to the European and I'm guessing he's going to look at the world level after that. So I'd like to take that route. But again, like you said, nothing's planned. Anything can happen. Opportunities might come that might be better than what you've got planned. So, yeah. you know, we'll see how it goes. Wait there, Joe. Hey, 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 Dave. Wait a second. We'll ask Eddie if he knows what it means. Ask him. Do you know, we're trying to work out why they called Lewis Ritson the Sandman? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> No one's ever... I don't know. Steve might know. Steve? <laughs> Why'd they call Lewis Ritz in the Sandman? Do you oh, know? You'll, have to ask, you'll have to ask Phil that. Okay. You'll have to oh, ask Phil. Phil. Because okay. yeah. he puts people to sleep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm still going to ask him. I want to hear his version of it. Yeah. Uh, we're just talking about potential, obviously, opponents looking yeah. to step him up. Yeah. Joshua Boatzi. I want to bring in an American for this one. We're talking about a couple. He's going to box in America after this fight. Obviously, his fight will be live on the zone as well. So, I was just talking in a, in a taxi hear about it just you know you the, the light heavyweight division is brutal 
So, but the jump from where he's boxing at the moment to that level is massive. Mm. So we've got to find someone in the in the middle. So is that a big domestic fight? Is that a good international name? Because we're at the stage now where I don't want him to miss the opportunity to learn when he's in the ring. Last time was great, and it, the other guy came out swinging. That's why he got stopped in a round. That was supposed to go rounds. But I don't want him to have too many of them because if he's only boxing now four or five times a year, which he probably will be if he's fighting championship fights, every opportunity to learn, he must take. So it's, it's not just about profile and rankings, and it's about him becoming seasoned to take on those fights. And they're brutal fights. Viterbiev, Bivol, Alvarez, Stevenson. I mean, it's not like it's a, a weak division. What about your new man? Who? Your new man. Me and what? Your new man in America. Oh yeah, the one that was uh, had a few things to that say. That could be a big fight one day. World level. Did you see that? We actually, we actually don't yeah, like him. All, you know, we actually will <laughs> give it the old. Yeah, I saw that. And deep down, yeah. he's thinking, I want to chin him. This is what I'm saying. I saw that. I heard what he has to say. I got nothing to say. If we get in the ring, different story. So, I, if you're watching, I saw your comments. The ugly man, whatever you want to call me. It's all good. Talk is easy. So. Like Eddie said, I, I ain't gonna say nothing. But if we fight, we need to build. We different. need to build these fights for the future. Anthony Sims actually could be a big fight for world titles down the line. So could the yard fight. Mm. Now that's a fight we'd like to happen. Now we're talking about that outside. But you know the argument is: is do you wait till that gets to world level before you know because it's a pay per view fight, or do you do it now because one of them might not get to world level? Where, so. where do you rank him now, currently? I know he's only had seven fights, but with the top domestic light heavyweights, where do you put him well, there's, in that? there's stuff on paper and then there's potential, isn't there? So if you're looking at, on paper, who is the best light heavyweight in the country right now, you have to say Callum Johnson. Because yeah. he's, he stopped on Frank Pugliani, yeah. the British champion, yeah. in one round. Yeah. So there's no argument about that. Potentially, I have to say that Joshua Guazzi is the best light heavyweight in the country. But potential... You can't take it to the bank. Mm. It has to be shown. So can yeah, fair, yeah. can he beat Buglioni? I mean, Jose Burton is a really good light heavyweight that isn't getting the opportunities at the moment because the problem is again domestically, no one really, you know, does does Buglioni want to fight Burton? Mm. Does does Buglioni want to fight uh, Josh? Does Callum Johnson want to fight Josh? Does Anti Yard want to fight Boatsy? Does Anti Yard want to fight Jose Burton? Not really. So there's not many who, because they're all kind of waiting. A lot of people sometimes don't want to lose domestically. They don't mind losing at world level or European level, but they don't want to lose domestically. But they have to understand the big fights and the big paydays are domestically for them, and they may never get beyond that level. So we've got to put pressure on. We're looking to. I mean, it looks like Jake Paul is going to fight Craig Richards on the October 27th. That's a fight where the Good winner will kind of yeah. go on and fight Burton, Boatsy, Buglioni, that kind of thing. What about so, Ricky Summers? Ricky Summers is still not back in training. Right. And we wish him the best. He stepped up. Ricky Summers stepped up for the July 28th show. He had a kidney problem. I think he had a quick operation, but he's not back in yeah. training yet. So he's a guy who, you know, he was willing to step up. But they all want a lot of money to fight Joshua Boatsy. But we've seen it before with AJ and with other great amateurs coming through. It's just how, how it goes. But you know, we're very confident of the ability of Joshua Boatsy, the, the work ethic of Joshua Boatsy, the trainers, us. We think we've all got the, the perfect team to go as far as his ability allows him to go. And that's very reassuring for an athlete to know that nothing's gonna get, he's, you know, he's not not gonna get the opportunities. He's not not gonna get the training and the facilities and the sparring. He's not not gonna get the money. And he's got it all, it's up to him how good he is. If he's the real deal, he'll go all the way and he'll unify the division. If he's not, he won't. But it won't be, it'll Can't be down start. to his ability. All right, well, listen, press conference just about to start, so first time in Newcastle as well. I know, ever. this is actually what we said, because I didn't know when we looked at it, he's only ever boxed in Cardiff and in London. Yeah. And that was never an intention, but we mustn't lose focus of the entire market. And also, as he said, when he walked in, he goes, I've watched last time, these, these fans are mad in Newcastle. Yeah. And they are mad, this is a great place to fight, and I think you'll enjoy it. It's got to travel around, it's got to yeah. fight in all these cities. This will be Newcastle. After that, it will be um, America. And then in December, it will be back in London. Eddie, Josh, thank you very much for coming to Apple TV. Catch you soon.